Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Monday morning. Starting off a full week here in July. Got a big week of activities planned. But first, on today's show, let's get started with our weather brought to us by Drew Potter's company, Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, taking care of our everyday comfort needs. We appreciate you dealing with our advertisers. We're looking at today's weather, high of, <coughs> of 89, low of 79. Water temperature did go up about 1 and 2 degrees. It's back up to 80 now, so it's going to be a, uh, a good week on, on the water, it looks like. Our Monday moon phase, we have a new moon coming in. Last night, was a, or tonight, will be the new moon. And so it's going to start with two weeks away from some strong activity with the moon, but the dark nights now are really good for floundering, so I hope you can take advantage of that. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at our 17th uh, right here in July. The whole week is great tides. All the way up to Saturday, and Saturday will be some, some neat, neat tides. Our Monday moon forecast is brought to us, of course, by Coca-Cola out of Panama City. We appreciate their sponsorship. Let's take a break. We'll come right back with our special guest. Okay, welcome back. And a familiar face here on Panhandle Outdoors, Ken Paraboy. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to be here. Always glad to have Ken. He always brings a lot of good information and the things that we can use. And, and he uh, usually doing some outdoor stuff. He had a little bit of problem lately, but we're, we're, uh, we're glad you're back in the saddle. And, and uh, we've got a banquet coming up pretty soon. We All do. kinds of things happening. And so, for any, any of you who've ever had kidney stone, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's no fun. He was telling me a story. Oh, my goodness it gracious. Took, it took me three weeks to, uh, to pass one from the, the pain in the middle of the night to oh. the final. And you're talking about some pain and, and a lengthy, yeah. you know, you just didn't feel like doing anything. You were fatigued. I lost 15 pounds, though. Did you really? Yeah. I guess it always a silver line into yeah. the cloud. Didn't feel like <laughs> eating, so. <laughs> but, uh, but the worst thing, oh, you didn't get to go fishing in June like you always go. No, it, it, uh, it knocked me out for about the first three weeks of June. But luckily, you know, the weather coincided with my <laughs> brief illness, so yeah. I really didn't miss a lot. Yeah, you wouldn't um, have enjoyed being out there bouncing around. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> All right, so we I got, got yeah, we got a banquet, uh, NWTF. We're going to put it up here, uh, right here, folks. We're, we're one month away. August the 18th, and um, it's going to be our eighth, I think, eighth or ninth since we started, and it's also NWTF's 50th anniversary. Oh, cool. NWTF was formed in 1973. So this is a, we're going to try to do a little extra for this banquet with um, goodies, raffles, drawings um, to celebrate the 50th for the NWTF. Cool. Um, I'm trying to put together some stuff now. I've been doing a lot of planning, been doing a lot of running around, mm -hmm. trying to find sponsors. Um, I want to have some more kids drawings or some things where we can, you know, have, you know, for kids in the audience that can, they get excited when they get up there and, yeah. you know, get in, in, a, in a, a youth only drawing and they don't have to compete with all the adults, you know, so they do. we try to get them some things and keep them interested. Um, I got plenty of guns that will be available. Um, we've got some good table guns for table sponsors mm -hmm. that a uh, selection that they can choose from. So if anybody out there, um, it, it's going kind of slow right now, but uh, always yeah. looking for sponsors yeah. and uh, We'd love to have you come help us celebrate the 50th. I've already got the uh, barbecue, the dinner lined up, so we've got the foods covered. The venue is the same place it's always been. Um, same auctioneer, which is a hoot most of the time. Yeah, he is. And uh, a lot of good items. I'm getting some items donated or attempting to get them donated, so we'll have extra, you know, raffle items. And hopefully it'll be a good night. Well, listen, I know you're talking about going slow. <laughs> Everything like this goes slow when you first start it. Then the momentum starts building up about the last right. week. Everybody, hey, got room for me, got room for me. And got yeah, tickets you up. know, I, I try to get things out out front, so at least give them a heads up, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and then you kind of start to panic when you get closer because you haven't heard from any of them. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of them have the intention of, of doing something. Yeah. They just, you know, it gets on the back burner because everybody's busy. Yeah. You know, and I, I understand that, so... 
Um, hopefully it'll come together in the next two to three weeks. So they can get individual tickets, you got sponsor tables, you got all kind of... Sponsor tables <laughs> range from $500 tables to even this year we added, if somebody really wants to do it upright, we got a $5,000 table Whoa. Um, with a bunch of goodies that goes with it, plus the banquet will be named or or oh yeah they will be the sponsor of the banquet but that was just tossed in we've never done that before and yeah. the guy i work with with nwts said hey we'll throw it out there if somebody wants to bite we we got a good package for that but mostly it's a 500 there's a 1250 and then there's mm -hmm. a 2500 and they all come with gun you know if you're in the 500 hundred dollar table when you get into it a sponsor only gun drawing if if you get to 1250 or the 25, there's a choice of mm -hmm. guns, gift certificates. There's a silencer on there this year, um, so it just it just depends on what you know the sponsor wants to to do. Um, they they come with six, eight, or ten people at a table, depending on that. Mm -hmm. and the, meal, the meals come with it. Of course, you know we're membership driven, so the goal is to. Um, gain memberships. Mm -hmm. You know that's the primary goal is to have have a voice yeah. nationwide, like the other conservation mm -hmm. outfits. To, uh, to well, have, and so, you know, so much of this money goes toward the uh, habitat and all. Uh, we've talked about it before. Yeah, we? and the state of Florida has one of the better and biggest programs of the mm -hmm. because the state matches some funds. So, mm -hmm. and then we distribute it like we've talked about in the past on the state board every year to public land mm -hmm. throughout the state of Florida. And there's projects that are submitted um, that we choose and pick and choose mm -hmm. and we spread the wealth, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. from bottom to top. We just don't keep it. Yeah, I've seen the map. It's all over yeah, the state of Florida. Yeah. And, and we talk all the time about the habitat of, and how we're going to have to not only to protect it, but uh, nourish it and all. Prescribed burning, yeah. roller chopping, the mulching. Mm -hmm. Um, food plots are a feel-good, short-term thing, so mm -hmm. they don't do too much of that. But it's <clears throat> the biggest thing is, is clearing openings. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you've got woods, uh, I've said before, that are this thick, the, the turkeys don't like that. Mm -hmm. You ha you need to have open space and mm -hmm. get that understory open, and that's where they like to live. But the good thing about it lately, I've seen some hen turkeys with some poults. So okay, it looks like there was an okay hatch this spring anyway. Good deal. Good so deal. anyway, come on out and join us. Um, we're looking forward to having everybody. I, I hope to have between 150 and 200 there. Awesome, awesome. Um, hopefully, uh, we have been that way every, every year since we just about started. So. It's always a grand time. I know yeah. everybody has just yeah, a great we, fellowship. We <laughs> see a lot of folks and start to get a feed. A lot of work. <laughs> start, yeah, folks, you, people don't, well, a lot of you do realize because if you've done stuff like this, the work behind the scenes, put it all together is massive. So if he could use some help, I'll always use some help. Yep, so. always use some help. <laughs> okay. Just let me know. All right, I'll take a break. We'll be right back with Ken. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're sitting here talking to Ken, and, and so many of us are in the same boat. We, we have all these plans about fishing, doing this and doing that, and then life gets in the way in some of the oddest ways, and y'all know what I'm talking about. So here you are, June, you got, all of a sudden you get down with a kidney stone in a couple of weeks and then, then what, is it lightning hit, what, what happened? <laughs> well, you know, we had that week of all those storms. It yeah. like it was every day. <clears throat> well, lightning struck the power pole right on the front of the house by the street. <clears throat> and <laughs> so, the modem, the television, the, the, the camera system, my security system, garage door opener, microwave oven, and about a week later, the freezer in the garage, which which could it could have been going to go, or it it, it, it it was that. But we we had you know I don't know over a thousand dollars worth of stuff we had to, and then getting all these companies you know the cable and to get them to come out or do something and, <laughs> and to we, we always we use the term you know real people with real problems real things and yeah. it happens to all of us so yep everybody can relate we it's can just, sympathize you know, those, with you. like you said this thing called and then of course when you do have a good day where you don't have a whole lot backed up to do the weather you have to look and well today would have been a good day i could have went but the weather's not you know yeah. good for going fishing mm -hmm. or but i did manage manage two trips since it opened, 
Yeah. Which is and, kind and, of pitiful. <laughs> Because you usually take a lot more. Because we usually show yeah. you pictures. You come in, we do like a half of a show on the restaurant uh, you've called. But, but you do. My wife and I went the yeah. other day just for a get out of the house a day, and we okay. did manage. It's Debbie here. Yes, yeah, Debbie. Here. She. That's a 20-inch fish. That's not a bad fish. That's a um, nice one. We didn't get any huge fish, and usually we stay in state waters, and you know a lot of times you don't get those unless you have, I guess, really special places, which I don't. So. We go out there and dunk some baits and then have a good time. And that day even was rough. It took us an hour to, just to get to where my spot was, and it was still inside state water. But, yeah. But it was dead into the waves, and it, it the, everything gets soaking wet, and you beat and fram, and <laughs> yeah. But uh, we caught, you know, we we caught a limited snapper, but we didn't have anything else much bite. I did catch a bonita and. Uh, the fish weren't the greatest, but they were legal and they were edible. So, you know, you can't, you know, you got to take what you can get sometimes. But um, I've got a trip planned tomorrow. Okay. And um, a friend of mine is supposed to come and go. So if weather is okay tomorrow, I, I will be out there somewhere tomorrow. That'll be good. I know it's not just a wave that we went through a heat spell where it was just really, really hot too. No breeze. Well, that anything. day we caught that fish, um, it was... It, luckily, there was a breeze and it yeah. was bumpy, but it was hot, you know. And then storms, dodging storms, and er everybody knows yeah. what. A lot of times we look at these pictures I show, and oh, what a glorious day they had. A lot of times people don't realize a lot, right. a lot of times, yeah. one, and we know yeah. it's, a, it's a lot of work. And, you, and uh, I was reading a story the other day, some folks sent me about they called a mess of fish, but they, they yeah. were out 12 yeah. hours. They got, they felt they <clears> beat up. And we, you know, just. Man, with my, you know, my boat's only 22 and a half, so. Yeah. It, and it's not good, you know. Your all your top and your all your your, your yeah. structure, everything is just stressed and beaten and framing, and it's yeah. just no fun. It, it's not as glamorous at times as we think it is. A lot of times yeah. it is, but sometimes it, we pay a pay a toll for it. That's when you start thinking about tarpon dock seafood, maybe running down there. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> then you come in, it was one hundred and twenty dollars to fill it back up. So, there you go. That's right. so how much could I got in the tarpon dock? Yeah. For the and then you got to go get out there clean it up and get it clean, oh, clean them that's up. That's another hour after you get home yeah. in, in the heat. But okay. anyway, hopefully I can get some days in. You know, close is 31st. So. Right. And if that if that doesn't happen, that's fine. we got the month of August and September, mm -hmm. and there's other fish out there. Well, that's uh, the thing about it. We, we talk so much about a snapper, but there, there are a lot of other be target. What are some other things you target? Mahi. Okay. You know, they'll come in as the summer gets later. and. Mm -hmm. At first, you know, their size is really small and they're not hardly worth fooling with, but later in the summer they get a little bigger. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're really good for fish tacos. Uh, kingfish, occasionally, just mm -hmm. for something to do. And uh, then I use some of that time to go out on good days even further and try to find a better spot, you know, for next year and uh -huh. at, at least see what it, okay, that looks good, let's, let's drop a bait. And sometimes you'll get a scamp or a fish you can keep, mm -hmm. you know, but at least you you're exploring, like if you're trolling, you know, maybe for the mahi or the, the king, you can go over places. Yeah, and that, and it's so. fun just getting out. And do you marvel at the electronics, what it tells you now? When you, yeah, and I, it, don't have, I don't have fancy stuff, but uh, yeah. It, I mean, <laughs> you can see I, off to the sides. And, I, I and, know, I, I don't have all that stuff either. I go with people and, have that. And, and I just, you know, those of us up in age, you, <laughs> you can't even figure out how to work them. <laughs> oh, so. I still look at some of the old pictures with the old paper graph is why they first used to be a paper I had graph. I had them. Did you really? On an old Mako boat I had and <laughs> you change those rolls and that, that stylus. And that was a big deal by then. Yeah. It really was. Yeah, and they were expensive we thought, too. We thought we were in another world. Yep. <laughs> yep. Little did we know what the future was going to hold. Yeah. Uh, have you get a chance to do much inshore fishing? Well, that's what I keep telling myself. I said, you know, I, I need to get back into or, or start learning some of that because mm -hmm. it, it'd be a good backup to mm -hmm. going off and getting beat up and spending all this fuel uh -huh. and, you know, and I just haven't done it. Uh -huh. But uh, I, I tell you what I have done is just some, get, some days when the wind is right is just go down to Crooked Island outside and just mm -hmm. take that ride down and yeah. and fish in Crooked Island sound a little bit and then come back. But if it gets nasty coming home, yeah. that's a, like a 12 mile run and that's another one that you got to have a good day to get back, yeah. you know. And uh, But that's that's a fun trip. There's a lot of wildlife yeah. and birds and 
man, uh, dolphins and all the mm -hmm. other stuff. Plus, fishing down there is pretty good too. Yeah, have you been down to the Keys lately? Y'all had a trip down there lately? Y'all want to plan? Or? Been a long time. Um, every time it seems like we have something that you know plans to do or go down there, something comes up. But it's been a long time. Is son still fishing He's out there? Still down there. He's actually running dolphin and uh, sightseeing tours more now than he is fishing because they're they're more economic and. It's crazy. Um, yeah, the more people want to Everybody wants yeah. to snorkel. That Lou Key Reef is right there yeah. from them, and it's all kind of, you know, reefs and fish. So he kind of took what he was doing here, yeah. the dolphin tours and the fishing, and he went down there. And, and the one thing about doing that kind of work, you know, uh, these guys I feel for because they had the pressure on them every day to catch fish, catch fish, catch wow. fish. And on something like that, you know that reef's going to be there. You know those kids oh, every day, and the water down there. I is beautiful. can see, I can see them doing yeah. that. Yeah. And it's a lot more economical. You can take more trips per day. If you do a two-hour trip, you can get three or four in a day. Mm -hmm. um, but these captains here, Harris lives right down the street from me. Yeah, they leave at three in the morning. Oh, you know, yeah. they got to get the boat ready, <clears throat> and then it's a. Uh, you know, yeah. some days he does 12 hours. You know, oh, no. they well, come no. in. You got all that to put up with, and yeah, clean it, go clean again it, the next day. Oh, yep, that's right. Let's take our final break. We'll be right back with Ken. Okay, welcome back. We're getting ready for a blast from the past. One of the old coat files that uh, out of his files that you're going to love this one. But let's look at the fishing game time today by Blue Water Outriggers from Port St. Joe. The one time today, new moon or night, one time, 11.52 to 1.52. Now, this is some good detective work. He sent me these pictures, and I, I, I said, there's got to be a story there. So go ahead. I was in Fort Myers as a lieutenant. I was over Lee in Charlotte County and uh, got a phone call, a complaint from a, a, a camera, a film developing outfit. And I don't know if you all remember Ritz, Ritz camera, um, Whatever, rich camera developing. Mm -hmm. It was a, uh, you know, you used to have to take your film to the right, places, yeah, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, this lady worked there, and she started developing this, this, this film, and had a bunch of pictures of these people posing with dead alligator. <clears throat> so I went down there and looked at the pictures, and um, I mean, you can't really do that, so. She made me a copy of the, the pictures, mm -hmm. and she gave me a name of who dropped them off. But it was a lady, it was a female. Mm -hmm. so, so she must be related to somebody. But, so <clears throat> this was in April of 1996. Okay. And so we started, I started an investigation, trying to figure out all you had was some pictures of these people posing with these dead alligators mm -hmm. and all these crazy poses and, you know, there's beer cans on the ground yeah. and, and uh, well, here's the first picture here. This, yeah, see that's big, a big gator. Yeah, these alligators look to be 12 plus or around 12. and oh. ended up being two alligators, actually. Okay. But anyway, um, we, I had to, believe it or not, I had to get with the Kodak, Kodak Eastman Kodak mm -hmm. Company in New York mm -hmm. to find out about these. This, these cameras were called Kodak Fun Savers, yeah. and they were disposable. Okay. So it was a disposable camera, and it had this 800 speed film in it. So first we're trying to figure out where were these gators taken during an alligator hunt that was legal, you know, back in September, whenever it was that year. And so we found out from Eastman Kodak, and, and believe it or not, they put me in touch with their legal, who, who came back and said, no, we only came out with 800 speed film in this camera in January of this year. So it oh, couldn't have been last year's hunt, okay. so we ruled that out. And of course, I had some names after I went off the one name. And so we got to, got to look into the pictures and in the background of one of the pictures, there's this okay. white, there's yeah. white looking pump Here's house. Here's another picture here, okay. That's another guy, is that, a, that's a yeah, huge Yeah, that's gator. another one. Uh, this same and, group of folks. Yeah. They're all posing with them and all. Yeah, he opened his mouth and laid inside of it. And oh, okay, so that's okay. Had his beer can on top oh, of it. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> And then on this one, this is what you're talking about. Dr. Yeah, if you look across the canal, there's a little white looking. Right there. That's some kind of pump deal. Okay. So anyway. That was your clue. That looked like the rim canal on Okeechobee. So okay. I, got with, I got with the lieutenant on Okeechobee. We went down there. We drove. We got on the dike, you know, because yeah. Lake Okeechobee has a dike. We got on the dike and drove that dike and found that found that little white pump house. Okay. And then going through some other pictures, which we didn't show here today, 
and the, they were, the one guy was holding a foot by a vehicle and the rear view mirror on the vehicle, when you look at the picture, it was showing a, a building in the background. Okay. So when I got with a lieutenant down there, he said, I think that's at so and such fish camp. So we went to the fish camp and looked in the picture, in the picture that we had, in the mirror of the truck, the reflection or, or the what the mirror was showing was that building. So we knew oh. we knew it happened at this fish camp. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so then we went and started talking to and they said, yeah, there's a group of guys here and they rented this place for a company that was doing some work here and they were here for about eight months. And um, this is their names as we know them and ended up being a name or two that I had developed through um, some research that we did. Oh, cool. And so we went and interviewed them and they gave it up. How about um, that? And we arrested them in July okay. of 96. So oh, it was okay. April. About mid-April, May, June, July, almost a four-month investigation from from pictures that were at a camera shop How being, about that? being developed. Well, that's some great investigative <laughs> legwork that y'all did. A little clue here and clue there, just put it together. And I, you know, I told the clerk at the the place because she was upset because, you know, she a lot of people Gators don't do nothing, you know, for them and don't care if we right, kill every right. one of them, which is yeah. fine. But she was one of the, you know. She, she didn't think it was right, so. Good, good for her. I she, uh, she, I told her just, just let the person pick these up. We don't want to tip nobody off. Yeah. And so, then we started our thing, and it went to, from pictures to Lake Okeechobee to the Rim Canal to that little white shack. Oh, oh. We got straight across from it. The bushes and all were still. You could tell where they'd pulled the boat up and yeah. all back when. And a good deal. So we well, threw them together. Well, so they, they. Uh, they were charged and uh, yeah, charged with taking an alligator. Shot him with a 30-30 rifle um, from a boat in that rim canal. Yeah, and posed with him and cut him up and did whatever. Great story, great work there. That's a, that's a good, good picture. So you never know. Forward, looking forward to see the next one. And, uh, <laughs> glad you're back well and get back to thank you. fishing soon. Enjoy yep. tomorrow's trip. Yep, thank you. Always good to have you on. Now don't forget, the Turkey Banquet about a week from tomorrow, really. I mean, a month from tomorrow. We need so. some sponsors. Yeah, need some sponsors. <laughs> thank you all for watching Panhandle Outdoors. We always appreciate the viewership. Do something good today for your fellow man. Have a great day. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.